Welcome. Now in this module, we'll talk about the best practices for applying security patches. And this is in the context of uh, vulnerability management, which we're currently addressing in this chapter. Now, according to Microsoft MSDN, the risk of implementing the service pack, hotfix and security patch should always be less than the risk of not implementing it. So this is a very important statement. And this also means that you need to understand and be prepared and do the homework and do the testing for that patch so in order to make the risk lower of implementing it because obviously there's a advantage behind uh, implementing that patch which is that it will cover a hole or cover a vulnerability but this also places some responsibility on us because we have to go through the process and let's look at what the process consists of um, also msdn says you should never be worse off by implementing a service pack, hotfix, and security patch. If you are unsure, then take steps to ensure that there is no doubt when moving them to production systems. And um, there's an article that uh, Microsoft has published on security uh, best patches for uh, security patch best practices. And um, you know the link is here on the screen. And let's take a look at some of those best practices. The first one is use a change control process. So a good change control procedure has an identified owner who controls a path for customer input so that the, the uh, business user being affected can always come back and um, uh, also has a say in what's happening. An audit trail for any changes. So you have a track, uh, what happened and what changes were made, uh, what dates, who authorized them, a clear announcement and review period, which is a timeline, uh, testing procedures, and a well understood backup, uh, backout plan. So you can, you know, a rollback plan. And change control will manage the process from start to finish. So, what Microsoft has very rightly suggested here is that when you're doing um, patch management or applying patches, the best practice is that you must have a mature change management program and allow the change management process to be the, the overarching mechanism or process under which the patch um, management is, is regulated. Uh, the security patches are regulated. If you have a strong patch management uh, change control mechanism, then everything should work fine. The second one is to read all related documentation. Now, before applying any service pack, hotfix, or security patch, all the relevant documentation should be read and peer reviewed. Now peer review, which means another person should also read it, um, the peer review process is critical as it reduces or mitigates the risk of a single person missing critical and relevant points when evaluating the update. And as you know, we don't really like to read um, information and sometimes uh, these bulletins are very boring. And um, so this is why it's recommended that two people should be involved in reading the documentation. They should also have a discussion. And this is to ensure that no one misses uh, the critical parts of that bulletin or update or security patch. And ensure the update is relevant and will resolve an existing issue. So if it's not relevant for you, if it's not important for you, if, if it's trying to fix something which you're not even running as a feature, then by, by all means you can either delay or altogether um, ignore or avoid uh, that, that security patch. And ensure adoption won't cause other issues resulting in a compromise of the production system. So you have to look at the impact and for that testing is very important. And you have to look at and understand and uh, really go into the details of the security patch and see what it's affecting. What services will it affect? And there are dependencies relating to the update. Uh, that is certain features being enabled or disabled for the update to be effective. And that's all going to be mentioned in the documentation, so you have to really read the documentation very well. And potential issues will arise from the sequencing of the update. As specific instructions may state or recommend a sequence of events or updates to occur before the security pack, hotfix, or security patch is applied. So the sequence has a lot of relevance and, and it's very important to understand the sequence listed in the documentation and, uh, and how that sequence will affect your security and how it will affect your production environment. Now there are also these other changes 
Um, there are also these other factors listed here in terms of best practices for applying security patches. So apply updates on a need-only basis. Don't apply every patch. Really look, at, hold back a little bit. Try to understand that what is this patch going to do? Do I need it? And what is the criticality of the system running in terms of production system and the application running in terms of a business application? What is this uh, patch going to do? What is the relevance? Do you need it? And how important is it for you? Um, testing is, in, is, 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 uh, is really critical, and you must have competent and experienced people who are going to conduct in a test environment where they're going to apply the patch first and see the impact. Um, plan to uninstall or roll back. Um, working backup and production downtime have to be scheduled. So you always obviously have to take a backup first before you implement the patch, because if anything goes wrong, you're going to recover the backup. Always have a rollback plan and take on board the other stakeholders and don't get more than two service packs behind. And these are the uh, recommendations from Microsoft, from, from MSDN, and the library um, uh, article and the link is there on the screen. And you should definitely have a read and look at this uh, detailed article. Thank you so much.